Hey guys, it's Burgos here and in this video I will talk about the XP strategy in the season 2 because things are a little, little different from the previous season. Also, I'm going to talk about the troop strange currently in the season 2 and of course on the last place is my tier 5 progress. How I'm doing with the tier 5, what I actually still need to do to open my tier 5 units. So yeah, let's jump. So the XP strategy in the season 2 plus is basically a couple things you have to keep in mind when building the strategy is in the season 2 plus things are a little more different for the previous season. We still have to do a PvP to get some experience after level 50. This one thing, but after the Augustone Simon celebration is completed, this is something that people have to know after this stone but in the season 2 plus we are presented with something different and this is after level 50 we still can get a darkling patrols experience so here's the strategy in the season 2 plus your heroes all of them i mean all uh, heroes that is over level 30 in the previous season it's going to start from level 20. For example, Alistar, Gwenwin, uh, Craig, these all heroes that I actually didn't level up, even a forum deal. These heroes I level up over level 30, and the next season, season 2 plus, all these heroes is level 30. Why this is important is you're going to have some kind of level of your heroes to do the Dragon Trial. Now, in the season 2 plus, Dragon Trial is not that important anymore. It's just not that important. Maybe because of these coins, trial coins, that you can get some uh, Indies tokens to open Indies. I think Indies have great future in the PvP. That's why I uh, try to get all the tokens I can from Indies. But anyway, you're going to need some legions to actually fill uh, or maybe finish all these 160 stages. The good thing here is a tier 4. I mean, for me, it was tier 4, and it was so so easy to do the Dragon Trials. And this is the thing that is important here. You no more get prestige from Dragon Trial, you're going to get prestige from Darkling Patrols and, of course, Darkling Forts by dona donating in your. Uh, in your alliance technology is you're going to also get some prestigious and stuff like this or maybe killing the apocalypse in the behemoth layers the places are many you can get prestige but it's not no more from the dragon trial so the strategy is pretty simple just use your heroes from the dragon trial till you actually hit a specific uh, level or maybe finish this 160 stages uh, put some maybe level and effort on this uh, Maybe level up your heroes a little again. This stage is not so hard and focus all your attentions in the darkling ports Why darkling ports is just because you're going to be provided with the books these books is uh, One second Maybe here is more easy if I get one hero. Maybe this Eliana yeah, this, this books is going to boost your main troops heroes. Now everybody has some kind of main troops. I mean, for me it's mages and marksmen. I mostly level up these heroes just because um, I need mages for the alliance war and I need marksmen for the behemoth fight. Since <laughs> I'm DPS guy and I want to be on top, that's why maybe Sindrian is the only hero that I have fully awakened with uh, full stars even my Lilia don't have full stars but anyway you have to have some kind of main troops and you're going to focus all these books over these troops so after you go to level 50 with your hero here comes the part that you can go and start actually farm these darkling patrols they're going to still uh, provide you with experience like 40 14,000 experience, 14,500 experience from this level 40 archers. This is going to be at after level 50. So, yeah, pick your two legions, that is going to be your main legions, and focus the resources this 
these books you're going to receive from the Darkling Forts to these heroes. And like this, you're going to have two very, very, very strong heroes, uh, uh, legions for Alliance War or maybe Behemoth, whatever you want to do it. And yeah, this is it. This is it. Basically, the strategy in general. You just have to go for the forts, use your heroes to level up faster level 50 your main two legions and after this you can put your books to the rest of the heroes trying to build this uh five legions because this this uh, patrols is not that, that easy they are definitely hard and you need very very strong um heroes not so very very strong but definitely it's it's not that easy to kill level 25 darkling patrols and to kill level 41 darkling patrols so yeah, this is my two cents over the strategy, uh, XP strategy in the season 2 plus since the things there change a lot. So yeah, let me know in the comments what is your strategy in the season 2 plus. I'm very, very curious. So let's talk about the tro troops strange. Uh, the troops is basically the same. You have all your flying units, marksman, mages, cavalry, infantry, all these troops is still here. But there is something that is, is different. Now through the seasons we have Tamaris, we have Beleron. Both of them are with different maps. So in the, the Beleron there is a lot of rivers, a lot of mountains, a lot of everything. Also we're presented with the new heroes. We have marksmans, we have now infantry, new heroes, uh, we have uh, cavalry heroes and I think we're going to see mages is going to be the next heroes. So let's start from there, maybe from the heroes. I think in the season 2 plus, the best troop so far is the mages. Both mages, flank one and the ground one. So why is this? Some people even switch to spring warden just because of the flying cavalry, but I don't see the power of the flying cavalry. Yeah, they can go over the mountains. That is for sure one of the things that they can do. But in the war zone, more and more people are not farming anymore. And this is very, very crucial when you start I mean, building your cavalry uh, legion. Is because cavalry, first of all, is hard for them to actually uh, jump on the battlefield because they're like they're melee they, they have to go to the legions and if there is a bow of mages they're going to get destroyed from the other side the flying mages even though that they don't have a flying hero legendary hero is still for me the best flying troop just because it's got very far range they can go over the rivers they can go over the mountains and stuff like this again the flying cavalry was very very strong when the people were still in the developing process, they were still needing some resources uh, and stuff like this. So to kill gathering heroes was the main reason maybe that I would go to Spring Warden. Just because yeah, it's absolutely pointless to actually go for flying cavalry if you don't have any purpose <laughs> at all. I mean, you, you have to kill some gathering heroes with this. And I'm not quite sure that they're good in the PvP that much. So that's why I actually start with the uh, flying units. First of all, to select the troop there because flying units have some advantage over the ground units. Now let's jump on the ground units. In the season 2 plus, we're presented with the Skogu and Goresh. This is two new infantry heroes that is mostly focused over the counter attack and yeah, I'm not quite sure that this should be the main purpose of the infantry to do a counter attack. Now, if you're a tier 5 player, definitely uh, this hero is going to bring a lot of value to you with the counter attack. But if you're tier 4, I don't think you're going to get some value from uh, infantry uh, with these two heroes just because you're going to get destroyed very very fast You're going to get destroyed very very fast if you don't have some kind of tanky infantry something uh, Madeline Garwood and stuff like this. So yeah So far these two heroes 
I don't think they boost much the infantry. On the other side, we still have these heroes from the season 1 plus, and this is Sindrian and Frygar. I still think, I'm not quite sure, can actually the game provide us with a more strong marksman combo. Now both of them are boosting the damage of the marksman, so they make marksman like very very strong unit, very very strong unit, but they don't have any rage skill that doing damage, but we don't care about this. The main issue with the marksman is their range. If there is two balls with mages, if you want to go with your marksman to do some kind of damage, you have to do half of the distance. And like this, you're vulnerable to mage attack and you can get destroyed like this. Maybe if there is a push, you can push with your marksman. But when there is a stage where both um, two balls are sending some hits here and there, marksman is going to get destroyed. Still, these two heroes are very good for the behemoths and not very good, they're the best heroes for the behemoths uh, doing tons of tons of damage of course with not this artifact and some pet of course but anyway, you get the idea Still, I think this is the booster for the marksman but again, I still... Uh, they definitely increase the strength of the marksman again but there is some issue with the troops and this is the medium uh, medium range in my opinion and yeah definitely you have to go for marksman this is the best unit for the behemoths period so jumping over the cavalry our cavalry have a lot of opinions there but i still don't think the melee units have big advantage in the alliance war in Call of Dragon, we definitely have range units with a different range, very far, medium and melee. I still think the melees don't have big advantage over the range units. Because if you put like 50 legions with range units inside, I mean one bow, there is basically so so hard for the melees, either infantry or cavalry, to actually touch this bow. You're going to get destroyed. I already tried to execute some artifacts because cavalry have very very strong artifacts. I mean they hit like a truck. And till you go there by sending your legion there, you know this legion is dead. Period. This legion is dead. You're going to get maybe on 60 or 70 percent to execute the artifact. But after execution of artifacts, even though this artifact is doing massive damage your legion is dead that's it so uh i'm not quite sure about the um, cavalry how they're good in the season two plus the flank one maybe for killing gathering heroes but again gathering heroes is not something you're going to see that much in the war zones people just go in the safe zones in the zone one maybe zone yes yeah, safe zones where there is no enemies and you can definitely farm there but in the real PvP, in the open field PvP, not quite sure that the, the cavalry have that power. They're still good for the rally, but that's it. And of course, at last is actually the mages. Still, I think the mages is the strongest troop in the game. Now, just because of this hero, this hero is making the mages the power they are. Skill talent tree, heavy damage with rage skill, massive damage, 1200 with 50% chance to uh, inflict Scorch that is going to do um, extra deals damage every second, damage factor 200, In this per second that's extra 1000 damage, spreading the scorch to the two uh, surrounding enemy legions this is spreading this 1000 damage also here you get a 50 percent chance um here you hit one more legion with lilia so in total after you fire up with lilia you can actually hit five legions three from the spells and two extra legions by spreading the scor the scorch so this is absolutely insane massive hero keyword hero and still making the 
making the mages very powerful also phoenix eye is one artifact that is one of the best artifacts in the game and normally the the best artifacts in the game most of the times are with uh, some kind of buying with gems you have to buy them with gems but this one is actually free to play friendly and we go to compendium we're going to see probability now king slayer is for cavalry very very good artifact but still rest of the artifact is not good only the phoenix eye is a good one maybe shadow blades but there is way way better artifacts for uh, uh for for marksman that is doing pretty decent damage but still is it's, it's a good one we have good one but the best one is phoenix eye in my opinion so yeah in the season 2 plus i think the mages Flying one and the ground one is still the best troops presented in the game. Even the behemoths now need some mage attack, so you need mages in the cave with the behemoth fight, since at some point some behemoths is becoming immune to physical attack. So definitely mages is going to help also there. So this is for the troop strange, my personal overview. I hope let me know in the comments below what you think about the troop strange uh what is your personal opinion I'm very curious so let's talk about my tier 5 progression and the things i'm thinking to do actually to make these things more faster boy this opening tier 5 is so 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 hard and ask for so much invest now for the rally drums currently i, I spend gems here I spent gems just because I didn't do forts. I think maybe this is a mistake that I didn't do forts. Forts is providing with better rewards. But yeah, the watchtower is again something that I have to also focus. Here I need two levels like uh, 7,000 or maybe 8,000 8, arrows I need to finish the watchtower. 8,000 arrows is like 80,000 gems. <laughs> <laughs> and rally drums to finish rally drums i also need like uh, 4700 something like this to actually finish my rally drums from there things is becoming very very easy just because currently i'm researching this thing you need your whole economy tree level it up to open a tier 5 uh, something that i didn't actually expect <laughs> But you have to do it because you're going to need this at level 10. So yeah, you, you need all these things. This thing need this thing. This thing need all these things. It's basically yeah, opening a tier five is like upgrading almost everything in your castle from researches to the buildings and stuff like this. But yeah, I have some. Um, Let's talk about the speed ups. We already know what's going on with Rally Drums and Watchtower. Here comes the speed ups and resources. Currently, I have uh, 26 million. I have some million of resources, 70 million mana. If I check rest of the resources, I definitely have a lot of resources. Uh, for sure, I can easily uh, get these things done. 1000 of this, uh, which is one, this is basically. 150 million resources from this uh, more from this so i'm confident with the resources but what about the speed ups how my speed ups are going yeah i have some building speed ups but at some point you're not going to need these building speed ups even though that the rally drum actually asks you for 24 days this is absolutely nothing comparing to the research things and yeah i have some uh, speed ups for my troops after i go to tier 5 you're going to uh you have to you have to retrain these troops tier 4 to tier 5 of course first always watch to fuel your legion after this go for the next tier troops it didn't actually matter from tier 2 to tier 3 or from tier 4 to tier 5 uh, always keep your legion full so i have some speed ups here i don't have many of the research speed ups but i have pretty decent universal speed ups i don't know if you're going to see them maybe i'll move, move my camera here and like you see i have 126 
um, 24 hours, 7 days, 15 hours, uh, 100 days with this thing here. So, yeah. maybe let me back my camera. So, yeah, definitely I have a lot of speed ups that may actually help me opening tier, uh, tier 5. Uh, because some researches is cost a lot. Some researches is like 70 days and it's not even the last one. This one is 70 days and still there is a level 10 that need to be researches. From level 8 to level 9 is 70 days. I'm not quite sure how much is going to be from level 8 to level 10. But anyway, still in the progress. I have to focus maybe to spend some gems, but I have to buy also the speed ups from the uh, V15, all these um, 24 hour speed ups. Still, two left, it's not so easy. They cost 600 gems, that's a lot of gems. And at total, every week is 12,000 gems, that's an insane amount of gems. But yeah, yeah. So, this is my progress in tier 5. For the people who is curious, I'm a wall spender. I buy the daily chest from day to, from time to time, and I have uh, this monthly chest. Some people even say this is a free to play player, but I don't think you're free to play if you spend any money, even if this is one cent. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess this will be for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you do, hit one like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.